We're in a beautiful part of the world, North Worcestershire, and uh, in a beautiful canal village called Wolverley. We cruised here a couple of days ago. We did what? Three miles to get here, I think? No, Something I think it's like about that. five or six. Oh, was it? Yeah. It, it went quickly. It was lovely. And uh, we've moored up and had a quick look around the village and it is stunning, stunning. and we need to Wonderful. show you it. It really is yeah. something special, isn't it? It is. It's one of the best canal side villages we've ever I seen. Think, I think uh, we've if not said that the before. The best. Yeah. <laughs> we forget all the others. And we've got the best weather. Like the sky is so blue today. It's warm. I think it's going to be ice cream weather. I think it's going to be a beer in the pub weather. I think so. Um, we've got everything, everything going for us today. So we thought you might like to tag along with us and uh, see this lovely village of Wolverley. But before we do that, here's our little trip here. Stourport on Severn purely exists because of the Staffordshire and Worcester Canal being built in the late 17th century. Such was the rapid growth of the town, the canal company even built the impressive Tontine Hotel. Today, the restored canal basins are a great place to discover the town's history. Today we're travelling six miles, six locks from Stourport through Kidderminster to the beautiful village of Wolverley. Bike come in. They're big, aren't they? They're lovely, aren't they? This is the impressive Falling Sands Viaduct and was opened in 1878 to connect trains from Bewdley to Kidderminster and Birmingham. Now the Seven Valley Railway runs old locomotives from Kidderminster to Bewdley. And just our luck, there were no steam trains passing the day we cruised under. Beautiful. Not so. Hawthorn berries are going ripe already. It was just a couple of weeks ago and it was all in flower. And now, 
under the side they're green on the top they're going red already you know what that means don't you saucy whore relish yeah homemade tomato ketchup but Real not sauce. from tomatoes no Do we have here, Francis? It's the dragon's lair. Mm. There's a, I don't know anything about it other than there's this sculpture and it's absolutely amazing. Look at the big claws on it. But not only that, look what's in here. It's chicken of the woods. Whee. And it's the first lot of chicken of the woods that we've found this year. And normally, I even brought a knife with me. I was going to cut some off, but there's a big problem that if chicken in the woods is growing on yew, you can't eat it because it absorbs the poisons and the toxins from the yew tree. Um, obviously, I don't know what this is. The chances are it's an old oak. I'm not an expert enough, um, but we're not going to pick. We're not going to cut it, but it's just, that's a beautiful specimen. Normally I just cut a little piece off with a knife and let the rest grow. You do see lots of it gets broken off. People just take chunks off and take far too much, but it's a beautiful fungus. That's a shame because so, it goes nice fried in a pasta, doesn't it? It's a fabulous, fabulous mushroom. So I'm sorry you've got cauliflower and potato curry instead tonight oh, now. Oh no. But what a fabulous thing this is. It is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful sculpture. Yeah. A short two mile walk took us past the dragon tree sculpture into the village to view the St John the Baptist Church and ended in a very nice beer at the lock-in. Just a few yards on from the um, chicken in the woods, we've got three or four yew trees. This is a big old yew, so I think the chances are that was definitely a yew. And thinking about it, normally chicken of the woods like that gets picked and harvested really quickly. And I think the reason that it's still there is because it probably is you and anybody local knows that. Ho hum. Look for an oak tree with it then. There's no oaks. I haven't seen any oaks no. around this little bit of woodland at all. So Ho hum. Never mind. Onwards and upwards. first mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1089 and uh, there are 13 listed buildings here so it's quite an old village lots of big beautiful buildings I think uh, there are a few there are a few well-heeled people here Francis oh my goodness they're, they're massive these houses aren't they yes they are we haven't found anything that's small enough for us yet well actually we have we'll yeah. show you in a bit we brought our narrowboat along with us <laughs> Archie, come on. They've even got their own traffic light. It's a narrow lane with those sandstone walls either side. Just amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. Oh, 
Yeah, it's not an old school, but the uh, the old vicarage. They had to rough it, didn't they? The clergymen in the old they? days. Well, the poor people were paying them half of their money in arms. All right, Fran, let's not get political. <laughs> Having a nice day out. Anyway, here's the first pub of the day. We're not going in because we had a quick one in there yesterday in the Queen's Head. Uh, really good beer. Can't speak about the food because we didn't try it. But it's an odd place inside, isn't it, Fran? <laughs> it's quite a nice garden at the back, but it's a bit like a canteen inside. It, it is. It's it an absolute yeah. stunning garden at yeah. the back, to be honest. It's really nice. But look it's at this. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. So scented. It's big. Beautiful, really beautiful. We want, we need smelly vision, don't we, for uh, <laughs> people to smell this? It's absolutely gorgeous. All around this area, in the sandstone rocks, are caves, and I think nobody's really sure exactly what they were originally built for. Some of them definitely are houses, uh, whether they still are or not, I don't know. But uh, just behind us here in the pub car park is a house that the back rooms actually go into the rock. We which have is seen really photos of them online, yeah. haven't we? And you, the back is a, is a cave at the yeah. back of the house. Could you live in that? Uh, nah. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't know. We don't know if hot summers that are enough to have to cool down on. I think it must be cold in the winter, must not oh, it? Well, I should think so. I don't know. It's bad enough living in a steel tube. <laughs> floating around in ditches but these but ones have got no windows no. on there so i don't think these were houses i think they might have just been storage or animal shelters i don't know maybe who knows but uh plenty more to come we've got to go up the hill to the church now you can see this really old property here the rear of it goes actually into the rock original path to the church at the top of the hill but it uh, appears to be closed so we're having to walk up the road Well, there's been a church here on this site apparently since Saxon times and this current building was completed at the end of the 18th century. Unfortunately it's closed today so we can't go in and show you around.
there be an old story about these parts <laughs> of an old knight called Sir John Atwood who went off to fight in the Crusades and didn't come home and feared him dead his wife Lady Atwood planned to remarry and on the morning of the wedding a maid went out into the meadow and found a body or a person laying under the hedge couldn't recognise who he was and she ran and grabbed Lady Atwood who came back down to the meadow and the knight was then a little bit more awake and he stood up and he said I'm your husband and she didn't believe him and then he pulled out half of a wedding ring and he said when I went off to the crusades I split this half wedding this ring wedding ring in half with my wife who still has the other half Lady Atwood then brought out the half of the ring and they were all delighted she couldn't get married but they were reunited and his story was that he claimed that while he was unconscious in the cells he prayed to the Virgin Mary to rescue him and she brought him back to the meadow but he was a very pious man and he didn't want to admit that so he claimed that her sw a swan had come and rescued him and flew him back to the meadow and the meadow which we did see earlier on the walk is now called Knight's Meadow and yesterday in the church we saw a tomb with head and legs of an old knight which is supposed to be Sir John Atwood. Today the church was closed and we couldn't go in and show you. But thus the swan. Sounds totally plausible if you ask me. Absolutely. Now you've watched this, why not go over to floatingourboat.com where you can see lots of the products we make, friends' scarves and some of my paintings, catch up with some of friends' recipes and also register to get early updates of stuff forthcoming. Thanks a lot, see you next time.